Hello, hello, and welcome to Adam with Lucas. So today we're going to be talking about Fika, and in particular we're talking about their air fryer toaster oven. Yes, people, this thing does a lot of things, including rotisserie, broil, air fry, bake. Yes, people, you heard that right. It can bake and air fry at the same time. So in this video, we're doing a hands-on with the box, quick unboxing and first impressions on said air fryer toaster oven. After that, I'm going to be putting this bad boy to the Adam Lewis test to figure out is this something you should buy or maybe skip altogether. I'm here for you, so don't have to waste your time buying and returning. All right, let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, let's take a close look at this box. You have the name of the company right over here, Fika. I'm guessing that's how you say that. Fik A, that's really cool. This is air fryer oven, K-A-K-Z-2-0-A. There's an image of what's coming in the box, looking really stylish and very, very cool. Okay, it was very easy to get all of this out. I basically just flipped the box upside down. This is the top, this is the bottom. Slid the box right off. Very, very simple, and now we have all of our stuff here. I'm gonna break it down real quick. Okay, this was everything that was tucked away in the very top. You have the user manual right there. They give you a really nice cookbook. This is the rotisserie setup right here. Your drip tray, and then you get a basket. Okay, so once you get it fully removed from the packaging, this is what it ends up looking like. It's looking really handsome, really sharp. Let's go ahead and walk around this real quick. So you got the timer on the left here with a nice click sound and a good ding. Let's go over to the temperature. So it looks like it can go all the way up to 450. And then there's some secondary timer over or temperature over here for toast. So that's interesting. Um, I do like the fact that there are actual arrows right there. I think those are arrows. Nope, those are not arrows. <laughs> From this angle, they look like arrows. So that's cool. Very nice turn dial. You can hear a little click when it turns on. Go ahead and check over here. You got the air fryer, you got broil, warm, bake, rotisserie, air fry, bake, and then toast. So I was a little bit worried that this did not have toast, but it does. It has toast timer over here. So you can go light, medium, and then dark. I really like how rapid this ticking sound is. So you really know the difference between oven timer which is a slow click, and the toast timer, which is rapid. And another satisfying ding right there. The handle is very soft touch, really nice. The materials feel decent. Um, this is some kind of metal right here. Go ahead and open this up. Ooh, wow, that is a door right there. It has a broil. If you ever broil anything, you need to know that the door should be open for the air to come out. Otherwise, it's just baking. So this is designed to allow it to broil, which is what you have right here. You got the broil feature. Okay, so it has two. No, it has one stop. That's nice. So it has broil stop, and then it has all the way down. This is a very, very beefy door. It feels super um, industrial and very strong, and the hinges are definitely there. I like how the whole entire front opens up. So, And then you got that big 20 liter internal right there. And you got your racks. So it looks like you have one, two, three, and then you have your spot for your rotisserie right there. It looks like you have four heat elements on the top and then two on the bottom right here. That's gonna create a very nice um, hot oven inside of there. Then you have your air fryer up top. All right, let's continue to walk around here. So this glass door, it looks like it's double paned for sure. You can see just how thick that is. There's two panes on there, so that's really, really nice. All right, first impressions. The knobs are um, definitely solid plastic and they feel, they feel decent. They're not the strongest knobs and this the whole turning uh, ability over here is not the strongest I've ever dealt with. Um, but they definitely feel like they're going to last and hold up. The material is decent. It's not uh, super premium by any means, so don't 
think that you're buying a, a really premium um, air fryer toaster oven. This is definitely going to cut corners here and there, but the main thing is the internals, how it heats up the food, how it does all this stuff right here. So that's gonna be the thing that is going to be the most important. If it does all of this perfectly, then this is gonna be a good device. If it doesn't do all this perfectly, then you're gonna have to start to lower um, star rating and whatnot because of the fact that this is made out of cheaper material that's designed to um, function well, but not be super costly. So first impressions, decent, not the best I've ever seen, but I like it. Okay, so here's how it looks with the air fryer basket in place. And then this is the drip tray. I always just put these together. I don't know why, but I'm one of those people that doesn't want to actually clean out the main crumb tray at the bottom, or I don't really want that main crumb tray to be completely um, covered in soot and whatnot. I'd rather this get covered and then possibly um, put this in the dishwasher and get it super clean. So I always put that in there. I'm not sure if you're supposed to, but that's how I have it's set up with my other air fryer currently. And then of course you have your rack right here, which you can put right below. And that way you can just pick which one you wanna use at any given time. And then you have your rotisserie rod right here, pokes in on the right side and then slots in on the left side. Very, very simple, very straightforward. And then of course you have your tines which go into the chicken right there all right so let's get this thing plugged in and i have to say this plug is very very beefy it's a three prong so it has a ground so it's super super safe and it's very very large this is a thick uh but thin so it's a wide but thin uh power cable and it's quite long i have to admit all right let's just do a quick walk through with this thing powered on so i'm going to start off with the toast right here I'm just going to power it on and then if you don't see a light on down here, that means you don't have it set to toast, so you have to turn it over here and set it to toast. And there you go, you got your light on on the inside and it is toasting away. Go ahead and turn that off. And then you come over here and you set your bake timer. And then no light on once again because it's on toast. So this is the crucial thing that you have to learn when you're doing this is when you switch it to air fry, Boom, the light goes on. So the light is kind of telling you that you actually are baking. It stays on the entire time. It's not like a normal oven where you turn it on and off. And then of course, if you go to broil, you gotta pop that open. Oh, that's interesting. So when you go to broil, it shuts off the light saying, oh, so when you broil and you open the door to let it vent out, which is what you're supposed to do, it turns off the light because of this little switch right here that turns on and off that light. So broiling, it will not be on. Baking, it will be on. So if it's on broil and you have your door closed, you're baking people. <laughs> you need to know that. Okay, one thing I don't like right off the bat is you, you have this big gap between 450 and 375, and from 375 to 280. I really don't like when they do that because then you're really having to guess where your temperature is. So that's something right off the bat I don't like. My other toaster oven air fryer has uh, more of an incremental uh, temperature. So that's, this is kind of a downfall. Um, we do have it on air fry right here. It is cranking away. So on the side here, you got vents. And then on the other side, you have more vents. So this thing is really designed to vent. And then the entire back is actually vented, I just noticed all the way up there and all the way down over there. Okay, just in that short amount of time of having it on, it has gotten very, very hot in here. And the interesting thing is the top is not hot. What's, there's no heat up here. It's all coming out of there. So this has a good ability to vent the heat out without you getting um, this top part super hot. Of course, if you're running it for two hours, that's gonna change. Okay, I just discovered what this thing is and it's absolutely amazing. It's a total game changer. So you got your hot basket in there. You wanna get your food out before it gets too overdone. You put this right onto here and you literally just pull out. Boom, look at that. That is absolutely amazing. And then you can put it back in just as easily if it wasn't fully cooked. Boom, 
That is a game changer right there, people. I love that. Okay, these are my kids' go-to nuggets. They actually are air fry compatible, which is really, really nice. So 406 to seven minutes. They cook up decent in my other toaster oven air fryer. Um, so we'll see how they do in here. They don't come out as crispy as I would like. So this will be a really good test for this toaster oven. So we're gonna do air fry 400 for six minutes. Let's get into that. All right, there we go. That's what they say. Put them in the center of the air fryer basket. I'm just gonna slide the two trays in all the way, just like that. I really like how this just pushes all the way back. So you know it's in the middle just by pushing it back. My other one doesn't do that. You have to kind of maneuver it around until it gets in the middle. This is really nice. The drip tray down here caught all the crumbs, which I'll clean out after this. Okay, so we got it just below 10 minutes, so that should be about eight. Um, we're gonna set it to the 400 over here. So I'm guessing that's probably 400 right there. Once again, a kind of annoying, you have to guess. And then we got it set to air fryer. Looking nice and golden in there. Let's get a cooking. Okay, so they definitely got a little bit crispy in there, so I turned down the temperature, but it's about to turn off any second now. There it goes, ding, all right. Okay, let's take a closer look at the nuggets. So they're definitely crispy. As you can see here, this almost turned to being um, more burnt than crispy. So that's definitely something to take note of. Um, I may have had it in there a little bit too long and the temperature may not have been right at 400, but that's the difficulty with this. Um, definitely well cooked for sure, so you're not gonna have to worry about that. Um, a little bit more crunchy, I would say, probably than my other air fryer toaster oven, but definitely not as crispy as I would like to have. So good, but not the best. You like them? Yummy? I think they're yummy. Okay, here we go. We got some chopped up potatoes that I actually boiled for maybe 15 minutes so they're nice and cooked on the inside. And now I'm gonna crispy them on the outside and that way I'll get some kind of like home fry, if you will. Okay, so we're gonna be putting it in the air fryer in here. We're gonna set it to air fryer. We're gonna go all the way up to 450 because all we're trying to do is make these super, super crispy. So let's go ahead and load up the basket. Okay, here we go. We got the fries all laid out in here. I saw half in the pot because the key to success with this is going to be getting all of the potatoes access to this air fryer so that way they crisp up super nice all the way around. If you layer it, you're gonna be in trouble. So I gotta make sure we're at a single layer all the way across. All right, there we go. Once again, we are on the middle right here, lined up right in the middle, and we're gonna set it on the air fryer I'm gonna go for uh, 15 minutes to start with and then I'll probably have to crank it up or crank it back down. Now this is going to fog up for sure because we're dealing with some uh, straight up potatoes. Okay, so that is actually one problem I just realized is if you want to vent out, which I do all the time when I'm doing potatoes like this, you are gonna be in trouble. Now let's see if you could put it on broil. No. So it won't even let you put it on broil, and as we know, if the door is not open, it's not actually broiling. So the door has to be open um, unless they're gonna do something fancy with the air fryer vent and vent out the top, I am not sure. We're a few minutes in and the condensation is already left, which means the air fryer is working, it's venting out the top which actually comes out the back. So that is really good. I was afraid this was just gonna be a solid wall of condensation. That is really cool so far. Okay, that is very interesting. We have some dripping going on over here. There you go, you can actually see it dripping and it's starting to pull up water right there. Very, very interesting. So the condensation is building and dropping out on this side. And it, oh, there it is on that side too. Two drops right there so far. Some more definitely coming out on this side over here. Wow, that is very interesting. I wonder if that's by design 
that this door will vent out um, some condensation. Very interesting. Take note of that for sure. Okay, this is very interesting. We're probably about, I would say, 10 minutes in right now, and these potatoes are starting to poof up like marshmallows. Very interesting, and they're all making a really interesting sound, and then it's just venting out like crazy in the corners over here, which is really interesting, and there's a pool of water down there. I'm not sure if that is by design. There's another pool over there. Very interesting. Some of these are getting a little bit browned, which is nice, but I've never seen this poofing action before. That is really, really interesting. Um, of course, this is at 450 degrees on air fry, so this may produce a super crisp, yummy patat. Okay, I had to call it there. Just over 10 minutes, I would say. I didn't want them to get burnt, um, so I'm calling it right there. Let's take a closer look. Oh wow, those are extremely crispy on the outside. Wow, that is very, very interesting. Yeah, that is like a crispy shell. I don't know if I've ever seen potatoes quite like this. Very interesting, definitely like an air deep fried. That's what I would call this for sure. Wow, definitely pass the raw potato test for sure. Okay, here we go, we got a pork tenderloin. I've seared it in a cast iron skillet, buttered it, seasoned it. I'm gonna wrap it in this tin foil and we're gonna do a bake at 350. Okay, here we go, we got our nice drip tray we're gonna use as a baking pan. We're gonna throw it back into the middle. There we go. We're gonna go to three, then we're gonna set it to 350. Once again, you have to kind of guess where 350 is. I'm gonna guess it's about right there. We're gonna put it on to bake. And we're gonna go for 15 minutes. Okay, the pork tenderloin definitely came out a little bit more uh, well done than I would like, but then again, temperature was not exactly. Nonetheless, it looks amazing. It's gonna taste amazing. It's super tender, of course. Just definitely on the well done side, so I'll probably tailor the time a little bit less for that machine, but it definitely passed the um, baking test for sure. So I got some thick bread right here. It definitely needs a little bit more toasting time than normal bread, but nonetheless, we're gonna throw it right in here. We're gonna set it to the toast and get a going. All right, there we go. So these things say to put the bread right in the middle of the rack, put it in the middle right there, and then slap it on in. I'm gonna play it safe, and I'm gonna go just below light, and I'm gonna set it over here for toast. All right, let's see how this toasts up. Okay, it just dinged. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. All right, so that is very, very lightly toasted. I like that a lot. I'm gonna go ahead and toast it a little bit more. I like that if you set it on a low toast, it's not gonna burn your bread right away. Take a closer look. Ooh, yeah, that is looking like some perfect toast right there. Very, very nice, just like out of a toaster oven. Yeah, it's nice and soft on the inside, crispy on the outside, exactly what you would want from a piece of toast. Look at that golden toast right there. Boom, not overcooked. I really, really love how this is very conservative. It is not going to burn your toast if you set it on light. So I probably could have set it all the way up there, maybe a little bit past, and it would have not burned it. I'm always just a little bit skeptical with these things overdoing it because they're so powerful, but that definitely passed the toast test. Next up, we have some fish sticks. I actually bought these because they are air fryer compatible. So we'll do 400 once again for eight to 12 minutes. Let's get into that. All right, there we go. We got the four fish sticks in the basket. Go ahead and slide that back in there. Then we'll just go straight to 10 minutes. All right, let's take a closer look at these fish sticks. So the top definitely looks like it got a good air frying for sure. It's very crispy, absolutely crispy. Let's flip it over and take a look at the bottom. And that's where it drips, it was dripping out. So that that's expected, but over here is very, very crunchy. 
Ooh, very crunchy on that side. This one's a little bit more soggy. It also was coming out. Um, take a look at this side. Crunchy over here, soggy over there. Yeah, that's closer to a deep fried um, fish stick for sure. I'm liking it. Okay, we have the original Tostinos. Well, not the original, this is a square Tostinos. So this is not a circle, well, it's more of a rectangle. All right, so this says it needs to go onto a toaster oven tray. So I'm gonna use the drip tray down here, put it back in the middle or the top and get a bacon. All right, so there we go. That's how it looks. It fits perfectly on there. I would guess if you had a circle pizza, it would also fit on here fine. You could go a little bit bigger, push it all the way out to here. I don't know how the circle would work though, but that's how it looks. Okay, so I just removed the basket entirely. There's the pizza right there. Put it on the middle rack because that seems to be the best way to cook everything. It seems to work the best in the middle. And then this wants it to be at 450 degrees for 17 minutes. Okay, let's turn this from air fry down to bake for the pizza. And then we're gonna set it to 450 and we'll do it for about 17 minutes, there we go. Okay, it's looking really good in there. The cheese is starting to get a little bit golden and it's definitely getting nicely cooked. Looks like we have a couple minutes left. It definitely looks nice and crispy. Looks very similar to any normal toaster oven. Maybe a little bit overcooked for some people, but for me, this is absolutely great. All right, I went ahead and cut it. It cut up really, really nice, very crisp. Take a look at the bottom. Yeah, that is looking really good. Definitely cracker crust for sure. Yeah, look at that. Perfectly cooked. Very nice. A little bit burnt right there, but that might have been the timing and the temperature. Yeah, that is looking really nice. Okay, so this is going to be an interesting experiment. I have some french fries from Zaxby's that are... Uh, that I just pulled out of the fridge. We've all done this. We got the soggy fries. We're like, ah, I want to eat them. I don't know how. Do you microwave them? Do you toaster of them? No. Nope. I'm going to guess you can just air fry them. So I'm going to grab out some of these. They're completely soggy, as you can see here. Not really edible as of right now. Set it to air fryer. And I'm just gonna put this on a lower temperature. I don't want it to really bake it or do anything to it too crazy. So we'll go just above 375 and we'll just do it for 10, just about 10 minutes right there. All right, those are looking golden brown for sure. Let's go ahead and get those out of there. Ooh, yeah, those are looking really, really nice, wow. Yeah, definitely got some crispiness on them. All right, definitely passed the soggy french fry test. Okay, I've been using this thing for long enough that I think I have a full comprehensive review. And let's start off with the build quality. So the build quality is actually kind of decent. The door is phenomenal. The knobs up here do their job. They're not the best in the world. This thing is definitely not premium. The photos make it look a little bit more premium. The gold is not as shiny as in the photos. Um, but nonetheless, it's a solid, solid build. It looks really cool. I think it looks great. Um, and it really does its job. So the build quality, I'm going to give it a four out of five. It's not premium. The fit and finish is solid though, but it's just not shiny and premium like I would like it to be. Let's talk about the inside. So once you turn this thing on and you get to the inside, this is where your money's going. This thing has an amazing set of cooking elements. It really knows how to cook food really, really well. I was very impressed with all the different settings. If you look right here, there's actually a star on the rotisserie, which means this is an air fry rotisserie. Now, I wasn't able to uh, cook any sort of whole chicken or any sort of big amount of meat uh, for this review, but I could guarantee you that that rotisserie is going to do its job. The air fry bake was phenomenal. The toast 
it toasts bread uh, super, super easily. Air fryer was next level. This is actually better than the other air fryer I reviewed. The broil, I don't know if it's gonna broil or not because the door shuts off when you open it, but they may have a vent that works better. Um, so I, have, I wasn't able to test the broil. The warming feature, of course it works. The bake, absolutely amazing. I do wish I could see the in-between right here. I wish it would show me where it was at 400, where it was at 350. That would be absolutely amazing. 375 is a weird um, temperature. Usually it's 350 is like standard. So that's kind of weird. I wish it gave a little bit better um, uh, temperatures, but they could do that. They could easily do that um, if they wanted to. The timer over here, I actually found it to be um, kind of interesting because if it got too low, if it got, if you try to set it on like just a couple minutes, it actually wouldn't activate. So that was really strange. You had to go over like five and then it would activate. So definitely take note of that. If you're gonna be putting stuff in here for for what is like two minutes, it's not gonna work. Okay, so all in all, I'm gonna give this thing a solid 4.7 star rating. I'm gonna say that if you know what you're buying, you're, you're getting a great air fryer toaster oven for the price. The ability to rotisserie a small chicken is next level. The ability to rotisserie um, large chunks of meat is next level. That is so amazing. I absolutely look for rotisserie in toaster ovens because I do like to do a rotisserie a couple times a year. So definitely take note of that. This is absolutely amazing. High, high star rating, build quality. This thing is gonna last. It's not premium by any means. So hopefully you're not trying to buy this for a premium uh, look and fit and finish, but it's built very solid. The heating element inside, like I said, is next level, really, really good. So high, high, high star rating, definitely worth your money. Buy it. All right, there you go. That's the Fika air fryer toaster oven. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely click to clack that like button. And if you want to join the Adam Lucas family and you want to be a part of this crew, hit that subscribe button. Every time I get a subscriber, I get a boost to make more and more videos. And it's because of you guys, I surpass 4K. Yes, people on my way to 5K, but I need your help. Yes, you right there. Tell your friends, tell your family. This guy's on YouTube. They should go subscribe and watch my channel. But as always, I thank you for watching each and every one of my videos and I will catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.